The wolf warriors appear in many periods of history and emerge among many legends around the world, from the Indo-Europeans to the Turks, Mongols and even the Native Americans. However, today I will be talking about the Viking wolf warriors, otherwise known as the Ulfhednar. The significance of berserkers and Ulfhednar in Viking culture and mythology has gone down in legend. These warriors were highly esteemed for their fearsome abilities, especially in the earlier part of the Viking Age. However, while the Berserkers and Ulfednar might have been seen as the epitome of the warrior at the time, Viking Berserkers used holm gangs, which are single combat, as a form of legalised robbery. They could claim rights to land, women or property, and then prove their claims in a duel once they had killed their opponent. In large due to such practices, home gangs were outlawed in Iceland and Norway in the year 1006, and with the Christianisation of Scandinavia, Ulfednar and Berserker warriors were being seen as soulless heathens who practised pagan magic, leading to them fading into legend. However, the stories of Berserkers and Ulfednar have had a broader influence on the way we perceive warrior archetypes in general, and today, we will explore Harold Fairhair's elite unit of Ulfhednar wolf warriors, and how they aided him in becoming the king of all Norway, as well as some other aspects of these fearsome warriors. I would like to thank Faithheart for sponsoring today's video. If you are a lover of Viking history, then you'll love Faithheart. Faithheart Jewelry Store was founded in 2018 to create high quality Nordic Viking jewelry pieces with thought-provoking and evocative imagery. Here I have some amazing pieces. Just look at the Viking wolfhead arm ring. The quality is remarkable. In addition, the wolf symbolizes strength, endurance, freedom, as well as unity, intelligence, and protection. I also have the Norse Viking rune spinner ring, which looks excellent and is a captivating and timeless piece. Faithheart is devoted to creating jewelry featuring one-of-a-kind Viking symbols that allows their wearer to feel more in touch with their faith, culture or upbringing, drawing inspiration from animals, nature and a variety of religious imagery. History profile viewers will get an exclusive 20% off with my code HP20. So what are you waiting for? Go to faithheart-jewelry.com for the best Viking jewellery on the market and get 20% off your own unique, timeless pieces. So click in the link in the description box below. The Ulfednar were a group of elite warriors who originated from ancient Norse religious rites and specifically wore wolfskins. To many, they would appear as howling psychopaths who were so wolf-like and animalistic in their behavior that they even influenced European werewolf folklore. Unlike berserkers, the Ulfednar got their power and characteristics from wolves, not bears. They would become more agile and animalistic, and the warriors would work in unison as a team, just like a pack of wolves. The Ulfednar embody the ruthless aggression of their patrons, Skull and Hattie, whose lives, like that of their father Fenrir, are all about the hunt that leads to the kill. Skull and Hattie's followers embody the wolf pack mentality, knowing how it's best to work together to hunt down their prey. Norse mythology speaks of Fenrir, the giant wolf who was the son of the shapeshifter god Loki. Fenrir is a mythical creature that continues growing into a powerful being by whom the gods feel threatened. For that reason, Odin tries to bind him with chains. This conveys that wolves have an important place in Norse mythology and they were considered to be great animals with divine power. Fenrir is also believed to be the being that kills the almighty Odin during Ragnarok, so it's no wonder the Vikings would channel the spirits of wolves into themselves, embracing the divine animal, to allow them to almost become gods on the battlefield. The Ulfednar are referred to in many sagas as types of berserkers, and have similar characteristics. In the Vattensdala saga, we encounter the Ulfhednar as a distinct class of warriors, separate from the commonly known berserkers. 
This saga emphasizes their unique abilities and the importance of the wolf skin and how that identified that particular warrior class. The Ulfednar's status as elite fighters is also evident in this saga, showcasing their prowess on the battlefield. The Vattensdala saga serves to show us the distinct nature of the Ulfednar and their role in Viking society. This passage reflects that the Ulfhednar were clearly noteworthy. King Harald had the greatest part in this battle. With him were Roggenwald and many other great chieftains, as well as those berserkers who were called Ulfhednar. They wore wolf pelts over their chainmails and guarded the bow of the king's ship, while the king himself guarded the elevated platform with the utmost splendor and valor. Many blows, both large and small, could be seen there. Now many events and great deeds occurred in a short period amidst the blows and spear thrusts, with grim stone throwing. The fact that the Ulfhednar guarded the bow of the ship, which is typically the front, while Harald Fairhair guarded the elevated platform, betrays them as a royal bodyguard, which typically are the king's best fighters. In the poem known as the Harafsmel, which in English means the Song of the Raven, a Valkyrie and a Raven discuss King Harald Fairhair's life and bloody deeds, especially the Battle of Hasfjord, which was the great naval battle that resulted in the unification of Norway. In the poem, the Ulfhednar are described as follows. Berserks bellowed, battle was underway for them, wolfskins howled, and brandished iron spears. Later in the poem, they are addressed again. They are called wolfskins, who bear bloody shields in combat. They redden spears when they come to war. There at Harold's court they are seated together. There I believe he the sovereign wise in understanding may entrust himself to men of courage alone, those who hew into a shield. This passage conveys that the Ulfhednar were not only men of courage, but were also elite fighters. Let's break it down a bit more. The text says, There at Harold's court, they are seated together. This could reflect that the wolf warriors had a seat in the king's personal political court, and may have even influenced his decisions when it came to battle strategy and war. The passage also states, There I believe the sovereign wise in understanding may entrust himself to men of courage alone. The sovereign, referring to King Harold Fairhair, and the men of courage alone, referring to the Ulfhednar, would mean this text conveys that King Harald, as wise as he was, would trust and take the counsel from the wolf warriors. In the Gretis saga, it details the life of Grete Asmodarsson, an Icelandic outlaw. However, the early chapters feature his ancestors, such as his great-grandfather, who would fight against Harald Fairhair in the Battle of Hasfjord. Chapter 2 in the saga states, King Harald made for Thorir's ship, knowing him to be a terrible berserk, and very brave. The fighting was desperate on either side. The king then ordered his berserks, the men called wolfskins, forward. No iron could hurt them, and when they charged, nothing could withstand them. Thorir defended himself bravely, and fell on his ship valiantly. The text states, King Harald made for Thorir's ship, knowing him to be a terrible berserk. This implies it was imperative for Thorir to die, for the battle to be won. Thorir was known as Thorir Haklag, and was the son of Kjotve the Rich, the King of Adgar, one of the petty kingdoms in Norway before its unification. A king's son being a berserker, associates the warrior class with princes and royalty. In addition, the passage also states, The king then ordered his berserks, the men called wolfskins, forward. No iron could hurt them, and when they charged, nothing could withstand them. This reflects Harald needed his own berserkers, known as Ulfednar, to overrun Thorir's ship and kill him, thus again portraying the wolf warriors as an elite warrior class. They were far from your ordinary soldier. Berserkers and Ulfednar were known for their weapons, but also for their lack of armour. Normally, most Vikings wore chainmail and helmets when they went into battle, 
berserkers and Ulfednar, however, often went into battle just wearing their animal skins, associated with their totem animal. So the Ulfednar would just wear a wolf pelt when going into war. This lack of armour allowed for greater mobility, and was thought to be compensated for their heightened strength and endurance. However, in Chapter 2 of the Vattensdaler Saga, it states, They wore wolf pelts over their chainmail, and guarded the bow of the king's ship. This conveys that not all berserkers would go into battle with just their animal furs, and Harold's elite unit would wear armour. As for weapons, berserkers and Ulfednar were known to wield a variety, including axes, swords and spears. One of the key advantages berserkers and Ulfednar held over their enemies, was their ability to instill fear and terror through psychological warfare and intimidation tactics. Their fierce reputations, and association with their pagan gods, would scare their enemies enough to perhaps demoralise an army. While the Ulfednar's individual abilities on the battlefield have become legend, the true strength of the wolf warriors was their ability to work together. They would often fight in specialised formations, one example being Svinfilking, which is Old Norse for boar snout. The formation can also be called the Swine Array. It was used in Iron Age Scandinavia, and also by the Vikings, and usually in the front line of the formation, was the Ulfhednar. The invention of the battle tactic is even attributed to the god Odin. The formation consisted of Ulfhednar grouped in a triangle formation with the warriors in the front lines, protecting the archers in the rear. Its main use was to be used as a wedge to break through enemy lines. Several boar snout formations could be grouped side by side and appear something like a zigzag to press or break the opposition's ranks. The formation would charge and shock the enemy lines. However, if the enemy line was not broken, its warriors would not hold long. The fact that the Ulfednar were used for such a tactic, attributed to their god, distinguishes them as a warrior class. The Ulfednar have been described in many sagas and poems during and after the Viking Age, and have left a lasting impression on our understanding of the Viking Age and its warrior culture. The lines between myth and reality may sometimes blur when it comes to berserkers and the Ulfednar, however, with countless sources conveying them to be an elite unit in the service of Harold Fairhair, and how they were trusted in his court and on the battlefield, reflects that they indeed played a significant role in the battles of the Norse people and the Viking Age. Harold Fairhair unified Norway in the year 872, with the help of the Ulfhednar. He died in the year 932. Less than a hundred years later, in the year 1015, Jarl Erik Hakonson, the governor of Norway at the time, outlawed berserkers. By the 12th century, many organised berserker and Ulfhednar warbands had disappeared, and with the Christianisation of Scandinavia, the wolf warriors would fade into legend. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you all soon for another History Profile.